Spoiler warning! 30 years ago, Toby Fox graced us with the definitive sequel to Nut Dealer and then ascended into the heavens until the second coming of Chris Chan just a few months ago. This is part two to the stupid summarization of Delta Room. And before we dive into the quirky and unique world that is Delta Room, I. Uh, I. Mm. Behold! This video is sponsored by Manscaped. As the pinnacle of manliness and masculinity, I have brought before you the greatest collection of men's tools. This is the Performance Package 4.0. Package, a grooming and hygiene kit to keep your inner gamer at bay. And this is the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, which is especially great at trimming your beard. It's super safe on your skin to reduce nicks and cuts, and since it's waterproof, you can even use it in the shower. Like, watch this. See? It works fine. And this is the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant. <laughs> ball. And the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Ball, to help keep your midsection smelling less gamer and more masculine gamer. But enough talk, time for the test run. Hey, future Sophus here. I've just been informed that I can't use that footage because uh, YouTube will get mad at me if I do. Sorry about that. For a limited time, when you buy the Performance 4.0 kit, you'll receive two free gifts, the Shed Travel Bag, and the Manscaped Anti-Chafing Briefs. If you order from Manscaped today using my link below, you'll get 20% off as well as free international shipping, as well as the two free gifts when you use promo code SOFUS at checkout. Manscaped, the perfect tools for your family jewels. It means you're pee. Upon starting Chapter 2 for the yeah. Nintendo 2DS, Chris Chan is rudely awakened by his mother, who reminds him of the fact that during the previous night, he ate her... <sighs> no, we're not doing this again. Chris Chan devoured the pie that Toriel made the night before. I can see why. He must have been looking for a Snickers to revert back to the normal and successfully found it within that snack. It's a good thing, too, because Chris Chan would have caused some serious harm to Furry Town if he didn't turn back to normal ASAP. Well, anyway, Toriel says that she may need to lock the oven again. Again? What happened before? And then leaves so that Chris Chan may once again prepare for school, and in order to prepare for another day of staring at a clock for eight hours, he performs his daily routine of flushing the toilet over and over for the fun noise that makes. Once he's assimilated with the rest of public school society, the teacher scolds Sussy for kicking her desk. Maybe she wouldn't do that if the students were allowed to sit down rather than stand in place for eight hours. It's like they're learning to be cashiers or something. Oh damn, school's over. Chris Chan must have passed out from staring at the clock wondering if it was actually broken or if time was actually moving that slowly. Anyways, Chris Chan finds his new friend Sussy outside the classroom and the two prepare to jump back into the closet, which would certainly have no weird implications for any outsider observing the two sneaking in there together. Oh hey, speaking of outside observers, this random deer just spotted us. Yeah, we're just two friends chilling in the closet, just like any ordinary person would do. Rudolph tells us to have fun and leaves them be. Honestly, really lucky for us because if she had a little more common sense, she would have been able to figure out that we are superheroes. But enough talk! Epic anime transformation! Also superhero landing! Oh wait, we can't start the cool stuff yet because no one important is here. Actually wait, that's not true. This dummy here lets us give it a big hug. As if it can say no. Alright, Chris Chan has to go back to the real world to collect all this junk, which I can only assume would be the Dark World residents. Then he neatly puts them together to create a fancy hat. Team Fortress 2 better take notes. Then, <laughs> that's a... That's a reference. And then I remembered that a good deal of you kindly requested that I refer to Chris Chan as they them. And since I want all of you to continue buying my company's products, here's an apology letter from Brand Incorporated that we wrote on WordPad. Anyways, they return to the Dark World to breathe life into Castle Town. Lancer is back, and so is Rules Card. Alright, now that everyone important is here, wait. What do we do now? Oh cool, Weenie Hut made us all bedrooms, custom made for each person's taste. That's awesome! You can be on the list of important people now. At least that is until he learns that we have homework to do and banishes us from the kingdom until we get it done. Not cool man, like, come on, I always make sure to set aside a class period or two to get my homework finished. Lancer, however, is a bro and rapidly rotates until he becomes a key item in my inventory. That means he's gonna be useful during this chapter, right? But more importantly, Rules Card also enters my inventory as well, and while the narrator makes it seemed like no one wanted him to join, I did. And that's all that matters. Transition clip! Back when Dancer was watching us chill in the closet together, she asked Chris Chan if they could bring Sussy to the library to work on their school project together. And the way she asked, well, um, I'll just say that we're not the only ones spending time in the closet today. But regardless, Chris Chan passes by the ridiculous traffic in town. The police seem to be helping as per usual. And before they enter the library, I hear one of the funny songs from the previous game, Nut Dealer. 
Mmm, that's a good hit of nostalgia. They then go into the library, and after a whole five minutes of not being sure where the other partners are or what they're supposed to do, Sussy decides to say screw it and play video games. Well, that's just my average study session in a nutshell. But when she opens up the door to get to the library's computer lab, the door leads to a dark abyss. Probably an allegory for the rabbit hole of gaming when you're supposed to be working. But hey, it's not like we're gonna do work anyways, may as well jump in. Wow, techie stuff, high stakes gameplay, oppressed minorities, we're practically in Gamer Wonderland. Wait, is that Prancer? Oh, well, she just got taken away. Whoever did this will pay. Dearly. Speaking of which, it seems that the antagonist has arrived. I know this is the antagonist because she was on the thumbnail for every Let's Player Under the Sun. She introduces herself as Queen, a computer robot thing, and lets us know that she could have easily captured us if she had simply brought more cages. But there's only one cage that can defeat Chris Chan. That's a prison. Now, you won't believe this, but Queen has this shtick where she's trying to achieve world domination, but she's very quirky and unique in the sense that her only motivation is that it just seems cool. Somehow her plan of turning Noelle into a robot is supposed to help her achieve this. Anyway, she leaves the scene by turning the oppressed citizens of the land into monsters. Sussy, an expert at dealing with wires, throws Chris Chan to cut them free from their enslavement. Chris, Sussy, and no one else then make their way through the Cyber City, a paradise for gamers like myself who love tech stuff, because liking tech stuff makes you very smart, like me. Oh wow, these are tasks. Like, you know, programs on your computer? I know this because I'm a gamer. And this basic puzzle? I know how to solve this because I'm a gamer. And, oh shit, we found Queen trying to force Dasher into signing a release form to be turned into a robot. It's okay though, because Dasher can do the unthinkable, reading the terms and conditions before signing the form. Chris and Sussy both reassure Vixen that she won't be turned into a robot. Oh wait, she didn't actually read the terms and conditions. Yeah, I knew that was an impossible task. I wouldn't have been able to do that either. And in order to stop us in our tracks, Queen invites us to face her in the athletic sport of gaming. But a voice rings inside Chris Chan's mind, reminding them of the obvious, that they're an incredibly talented gamer. God, they're so f***. Relatable. There's just one problem. Chris Chan is too short and weak to use the controls. Never mind, they're not relatable anymore. However, as Queen is relishing her victory, a stool magically appears before Chris Chan, and Sussy uses her strength to assist Chris Chan in using the game's controls. And well, I don't need to show you this part because you already know that I kick her ass easily. Did I mention that I'm a gamer? In fact, my gaming skill is so powerful that the arcade machine explodes, but Queen is unfazed and offers us a choice perish, or embrace her bosom. And while that latter option is really enticing, Sussy knocks our dialogue options out the window forcing Queen to leave without allowing us to embrace her bosom. Actually, I do get another chance, for you see, typing in the words agree to all should allow me to do just that. At least, that's what I'm assuming. I don't know because I didn't read the terms and conditions. But through the gamer world we go, and we end up running into the Rebel, a resistance squad, and in order to prove that we're not helping Queen, we beat them in a the dance battle. A spectacular performance by Chris Chan, no doubt. Which obviously means we're friends now. We probably get to join the resistance now, because no dystopian universe is complete without a generic resistance force plotline. Oh cool, fireworks. And look, there's Chris. There's Sussy, but then there's this strange pattern that appears to be a face I've never seen before. Alright, now we continue through Discount Ooh. Cyber Chase until we get on the tram that definitely has nothing to do with Queen here. Oh wait, these are all go-karts. That's cool. I'm really good at go-karting because I'm a gay- Oh, Queen! I didn't expect to see you here. She's finally brought capturing capsules. Wait, how'd you miss? I mean, I guess the plot doesn't demand we be captured yet. And you brought Comet. Why'd you bring Comet? Feeling extra quirky and random today, are we? After attempting to flirt with Sussy, Queen realizes that whatever plan she had wasn't working, so she brought in the next person. Behold! Birdly! The valiant warrior of brave intelligence has just entered the fray. Lord Birdly, or soon to be Super Lord Birdly, is teaming up with Queen against her will to turn this land of fools into a smartopia where- Wait, is he planning to commit genocide on those with no smarts? That's a bit harsh. Well, at least I'd be safe from it, because I am very intelligent. Wait, Birdly's offering to let me scrub the royal toilet if I join their side. Sweet! I love the fun noise that the toilet makes when you flush it. Alright, you've convinced me. Oh, well, then again, these are persona dialogue options, so I do have to fight him regardless. Birdly and Queen. Well, not Queen, because Queen calls in sick, 
fight us using the power of Burly Smart. However, we notice that we are riding bumper cars and continuously bump into his car until the coaster suddenly blows up and Burly falls to his death. Probably not because he seems like an important character. Queen seems to care a lot, but she lets us know that no one finished the tracks. I mean, Queen does work in government. It makes sense that she can't finish anything. So we also fall to her deaths, but not really because we're important characters. Well, most of us here. The two find a fork in the road and they also find a branching pathway. So Chris Chan and Sussy split up to complete their tasks. Chris Chan makes his way through the cyber city and after failing to commit insurance fraud, they find Cupid who probably escaped after Queen knocked her off the coaster earlier. And before even a second passes, Queen comes calling so she hides in the alley as Queen arrives on scene and since both her and Chris Chan's teammates are missing, she proposes a truce. But then Birdly comes calling, and in order to escape from his presence, she hides in the alley as well, to create your classic Scooby-Doo-esque type scene. After making a bunch of references to gaming, which I understand because I'm a gamer, Birdly makes a truce with Chris Chan, double trucies, that's pretty low, but then Birdly heads out. Honestly, I don't see what Queen has against him. I kinda like him. He is a gamer after all, and I guess I can kinda see part of myself in him. But anyway, she heads out as well, so I guess now we're trucing with Cupid? Wrong. We don't do triple trucies. But of course, because we are playing Persona, I mean, we're playing Fire Emblem, our choices don't matter, and she follows us around anyway. They solve puzzles together, Chris Chan and the other enemies teach Donner how battles work, they both fail to commit insurance fraud, they solve more puzzles, Blitzen gets her revenge on Chris Chan, and now that I'm out of reindeer names, I'll just refer to her as Noel from now on. Lamau. I may or may not have laughed at that for a solid minute. Honestly, I kinda like Queen. She's super random, but also smarter than she looks. Just like me, XD. This line here totally isn't relevant to myself for that matter. Lamau. Oh nice, she wants to play video games with me. My queen, how could I refuse? I am a gamer after all. But then Birdly had to drop a statue that he made down, destroying the arcade machine, and also destroying that great moment we were sharing. I honestly don't blame her for practically ditching Birdly right after. That was a pretty low blow of him. Alright, Noel. It feels weird calling you that. It's time to keep the plot moving. Through capitalism, the city we go. Should I tell you that I know what that is because I'm a gamer? Whoa, look, it's Birdly again. He recognized that we performed double truces with Noel and initiates battle with us, and while I'd like to kick his shit in for ruining the arcade machine, we are pacifists after all, so we defeat him by having Noel act smart and having Chris Chan play dumb, and thus Birdly takes his leave. God, I just can't believe how cool he is sometimes. But it wasn't long before we run into Queen again, who is still trying her best to get away from Birdly, and she coerces Chris Chan and Noel to get into the car in order to find Noel, whose disguise is incredibly convincing. And for some reason, she's making Chris Chan drive. Big mistake. Chris Chan wishes to destroy this capitalist society we live in, starting with this stupid concept known as traffic. Luckily for them, running into the cars is encouraged, and the party makes their way down the street until stop everything. Chris. Get the banana. Nom, nom. And now that we've acquired the all-important potassium, Chris Chan is forced to stop because there are far too many cars to push their own car through, which means Chris Chan has to get out of the car to hit the traffic button. Just imagine society if we have one of those. But as they make their way to the button, it feels like... Someone wants to sell them something. There he is! The funny meme salesman spammer thing that everybody likes so much. <laughs> Big Shot, that's the funny banger song that Toby Fox made for this episode, which also means we won't hear the actual version because I didn't do the optional Spamton fight. And on the topic of optional stuff, I won't cover Snowgrave in this vid because I didn't do that either. Maybe I'll do those later, maybe, we'll see. But Chris Chan defeats Spamton, presses the button to remove all traffic. For all you politicians out there, promise you'll make one of these and everyone will vote for you. I promise it's a free dub. And then the unlikely truces discuss the importance of finding Noelle and how Queen simply wants to take care of her and prevent her from running out of potassium when suddenly the car explodes. That was pretty random and quirky, and the truces split up. Wow, these cars also make a pretty funny noise, allowing us to find Sussy who learned how to use a basic healing spell. Not sure who from. And now that all these friends are reunited, oh, I guess Birdly's here too. Oh, never mind, he's gone again. The party of three makes their way through the cyber city doing the usual, solving puzzles, finding items, utilizing Sussy's powerful new healing spell, bullet helling in the overworld, solving more basic puzzles, working as a team to solve these basic puzzles, and running into Queen again. Oh, wait, we ran to Queen uh -oh. again, and it seems truces are over. And all it took was for Queen to say that she captured Birdly, not proving that she did or anything, to convince Noelle to be captured again, with absolutely no assurance that Queen has them, or if she did, that she would spare him in any way. 
Yeah, there's Burnley. Makes sense. As the ruler of the land, Queen invoked her inner politician and lied. Probably also lied about wanting to keep Noelle safe. And hey, look at that. She uses her traps correctly now that the plot demands it. That's not very quirky and random of her. Poor Burnley. He believed that Queen was trustworthy because she told him that she was a gamer. And while that may be true, she only plays mobile games. Queen has to die. Well, the prison life's never been for me, especially since there's no video games to play, so it's time for Lancer to become relevant to the plot since he's still in my pocket, and by requesting metric assload of shovels, get it since he's a spade, the trap breaks apart, releasing Chris Chan from prison. On second thought, maybe keeping Chris Chan in prison is better for society, but anyways, Lancer and Sussy are reunited once again. Oh wait, never mind. Lancer's use in the plot has ended, as you'll see momentarily. And, oh no, a puzzle. No way we can solve this alone. Which is why it's a good thing that Birdly is here to use his massive IQ to- Oh, he's not useful. I mean, helping. Anyways, I solve each puzzle on my own, proving that Birdly actually does not have the basic puzzle solving skills needed to solve puzzles. What else would you need puzzle solving skills for? But apparently I'm cheating, just like when you wave dash, and I know what that is because I'm the intended audience for this game. But then Birdly does the unthinkable. He admits that he was never smart and was only pretending to be smart, and because of his hubris, Noel's about to be hurt. A lesson to all those watching. Don't pretend to be smart if you're not. But like I said earlier, Lancer's plot relevance in this episode was short-lived, and he becomes a statue for reasons. And now that Birdly has joined the stupid squadron, I'm the leader because I'm the smartest of the stupid. Sassy and Chris Chan push Lancer around for a bit because it's fun. Then we progress through Queen's Castle, avoiding traps, disrespecting pottery, disrespecting more pottery, fighting the task manager, I understand that reference because I'm a failure in society, avoiding castle traffic, letting Sussy disrespect pottery, no, I want to disrespect the pottery, I haven't mentioned these teapot rides yet, but they're fun, oh, we're back here now, more computer puns, lol, where the hell's the key, thank you random doge for helping us find it, now we can get through the door, okay, we're splitting up, I'll head out on my own, and Sussy and Birdly will go together, time to take a relaxing trip through the battery acid atop the goose ride, haha, <laughs> I find it funny because it's random, pee pee poo poo xd. Oh, speaking of random, Queen orders Chris Chan to acquire another banana, and even though the voices in their head tell them not to, Chris Chan will definitely blindly follow the orders of this politician in exchange for some sweet healthy potassium. Sorry Rossi, I'm straight. But then they run into the great, the magnificent, Rauxalessa Car- Oh, I'm just kidding, it's rules card, but he allows us the opportunity to behold the destroyer of worlds, the death machine that we designed in the previous episode, and using this monstrous creation that I so painstakingly created. He challenges us to a puzzle duel, so intense that I, I... Actually, I barely understand how this minigame worked. I just pressed buttons and eventually I won, but apparently not yet, for we have only seen just 1% of the duck tank's true capabilities. Behold, it's ultimate power. Oh wait, that's right. Rules card's plot relevance is the same as Lancer's. God. Damn it! And before the ride is finally over, Chris Chan makes sure to flip off the camera. At least, that's what I think the rude gesture is. And then the camera pans to Noelle, who gets saved by Sussy, who escape using the nearby Ferris wheel. Haha, <laughs> random pee pee poo poo XD. And the two basically go on a date. Aw, lesbian romance is honestly pretty cute. I said f off or I'll say I'm straight. Anyways, Birdly, who has changed his ways and become stupid like the rest of the squadron, joins up, and as Sussy leaves, Birdly mentions to Noelle that he may be in love with Sussy now. That was a mistake in the half because I think Birdly's gonna die now. Sussy joins back up with Christian, and the two finally find Queen at the top of the castle, but somehow she captured Birdly and probably Noelle too. So we have to fight the two now because Queen's controlling Birdly, but once again, Sussy is an expert at handling wires, and we dismantle Birdly's control wire with ease, forcing Queen to juke us and make a hasty retreat. Chris Chan and Sussy find Queen and she spouts some lore stuff that's probably important, but for the sake of this video, it's not. But she gets booped by Sussy and we free Noelle, but little did we know that the real final boss fight was among us. Her battery acid is now four times as powerful, which means that Chris Chan and Sussy need to combine their strength once again. That is until Queen knocks him off the platform, but it's a good thing that Birdly and all the other important friends made along the way catch them and combine all their strongest abilities, but most importantly, my ultimate world-ending machine to create a Gurren Lagan powerful enough to take on the Queen of this world herself. Behold! And now it is time for a battle that will cross space and time that can only be witnessed on the big screen, or the small screen if that's how you choose to watch this, using the five Ds, dodge, duck, dip, 
dive, and dodge, I used the full extent of my creative machine to knock the ever-living daylight out of Queen. But her onslaught of missiles is extremely overwhelming, and I'm quickly knocked to 1 HP. Lucky me. So I'm forced to heal, but I'm just too unfamiliar with her moveset, and somehow the fight ends up starting at the beginning again. I don't know how, but I start the fight again, taking everything I learned from the last fight. But I'm a bit impatient this time, and it shows, as I lose a bunch of HP, and I'm forced to heal right off the bat. During round two, I try to reserve myself by focusing a bit harder, and the voices in my head try to tell me to just dodge, but I ignore those immediately. It's like Twitch chat, man. Always backseat gaming. You can't avoid it. Eventually, I manage to get to round three, but I get hit by more moves that I'm unfamiliar with until Queen procedurally loops her dialogue until the fight starts at the beginning again. Not sure how this keeps happening, must be a bug or something, but anyways, attempt number three. Using everything I've learned about the fight, I managed to get to round two almost instantly as Sussy is mashing her controls to help me play better, and before I know it, round two is over as well. And now that I'm better prepared for this move, I have the dodging capacity of goddamn Neo. Well, almost, but at this point I'm far enough ahead that I can afford to spend my TP on stuff like this. I don't know what it does, but it makes me happy to look at it. And then she sends her final attack my way, and using the power of friendship, God, anime, and corporate advertising, I take the final punch to pierce the heavens and knock Queen into the sky. That is, until she unleashes her ultimate weapon, something Chris Chang never could have predicted, detachable hands. And with us defeated, Queen threatens to crush us, but then she runs out of battery, huh, well, well, well whatever. Huh, well, the, uh, the rest of what they talk about is unimportant, but know that Queen doesn't actually want to destroy the world, so she lets us go, and Chris Chan finally seals the fountain to end the second chapter once and for all. And since this chapter is already really freaking long, I'm just going to talk about how Birdly and Noelle think they had the same dream, and Sussy has a sleepover at Chris Chan's house. My mom would have never let me have a sleepover on a school night, by the way. Oh, well, this is happening again. Chris Chan's become edgy once again, and they're doing something that probably won't be explained in chapter 3 either. Well, alright then, see you in 2030, everyone!